Hello and welcome to Bet Fred's Football Show. Huge weekend. We've got the FA Cup semi finals and some huge games in the Premier League. Paul Parker is alongside me. Uh, Parks, let's deal with the FA Cup first of all. We'll talk about uh, your old club, Manchester United, in a moment and the uh, European exit. But let's talk about Saturday's game 4 45, Man City versus Sheffield United. Have Sheffield United got any chance? Asked me that question over a month ago, I might have said yes if, if, if everyone had foreseen this game, but just the form that City are in and the fact of they're scoring goals from everywhere, they're making opportunities from everywhere. I mean, even Sheffield United fans can't be going into this game with any hope. I believe at the moment they'd just be enjoying, go and enjoy the day, the opportunity to play at Wembley, but you can't really see it, to be perfectly honest, the way City are, that they're going to lose. It's a phenomenal run Man City have gone on, isn't it? Ten wins and the one draw midweek against Bayern Munich. Yeah, but it's just the manner more than anything that they're doing it in. They're actually winning the games over and over. It's so emphatic the way they've gone about it. They're demolishing teams at the moment. It seems like their key players, the big players, have all hit form at the right time. And if that, something like that happens, you've got no chance because the belief that's going through them at the moment that they can score at any time or if they miss one opportunity they can go and make another one it's just a great position to be in you feel like you're in indestructible uh, and a couple of months ago people were saying they couldn't play with Haaland where well, he's on 40 odd goals pushing 50 now yeah well that's something that's changed a bit and I was one of them kind of caught in that one with the amount of goals they score without him all of a sudden now he's scoring goals and other players are scoring goals there's suddenly Pep again has done it he's man he's kind of still getting the goals spread out rather than just be reliant on finding that one person to score goals. At one point, it was like virtually De Bruyne and him, wasn't it? De Bruyne set him up and he scores. And it, we went through a stint of that, everyone saying it's great, but it wasn't that great because there, you know there's more than two players which are important to a team to win games. And now Jack Grealish has found that bit now. He's suddenly worked his way and he's playing more regular, playing in all the big games now where he wasn't play, playing in the big games. So he's found form, he's scoring goals, he's making goals as well. So that's added a little bit to it as well. And all the games that Man City have had in the FA Cup, all right, I know they've got this immense squad, but he goes for it, Pep. He'll mm. start with a strong team on Saturday evening, won't he? Yeah, he will do, and I, I like that. It doesn't make sense. You can have a bigger squad as you want, but every manager must know the players he wants to play in his big games, the players he wants to keep the engine ticking over. To tick the engine over, you've got to play games of football. This kind of, which I call rubbish about, oh, missed that game, missed that one because we've got a big one coming up. Sorry, by the time you go and get into that, your engine's a bit cold. It's going to take you a while to get going. Pep does go for it. No different to a, a lot of the top managers. They want, you know, Pep sees it the right way. He wants to win every single game. And if it means having to play key players and have got a big game coming up, he, he looks at it. Well, it's this game first. The other one will follow after and we'll see what happens next. Let's give Sheffield United a bit of credit. Get to a semi-final. Obviously, the main aim is promotion, yeah. which they should get. Four games left and a seven points clear of third spot in the Championship. He's done a good job, hasn't he? He has. It surprised me, to be honest, really, Paul Heckenbottom. He's, you know, he's really not turned it around, but he's got them going again as, as they were under you know, Chris Wilder. They're still a very difficult side to beat. They bring in these um, younger players come in and they show a great, you know, incredible enthusiasm. He's got a couple of lads on loan from Man Manchester City who've done a really, really good job, but can't, can't play, can they? They can't play against City, so that's a big shame for them. But, you know, they'll do themselves justice as they have done in every single game, Sheffield United. And it's just a shame for them, really, that all of a sudden Burnley have found this bit of form. Otherwise, we're talking about them being champions, but... You know, Burnley have come down with a, a lot in the bank. Uh, you know, a lot of good players still there from um, from the previous season in the Premier League. But Vincent Company has used that, but he has used those players, but he's changed their style from what it was under Dyche. So fair play to um, Vincent Company. He's, he's got it really, really going well. Right, prediction time then for Man City versus Sheffield United. I think they're always going to concede City. Always going to. I'm going to say. 3-1 to Manchester City, of course. And then the Sheffield United fans to have a good day out at Wembley and then enjoy promotion, probably. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, the last thing they want to do is be embarrassed, but I'd be very surprised if that happens to Sheffield United in that sense, of them being embarrassed. But you, you just can't look at them winning that game. 
Right, Sunday, 4.30, Brighton versus Manchester United. Brighton are in seventh in the Premier League, having that great season. And, uh, right, well, where do you start with that European exit? I mean, 2 nil up at half-time in the first leg. Probably mm. should have been more than 2 nil as well. And then it just went downhill in that last ten minutes. And yesterday, at times, mm. was poor. Yeah, I mean, I think we can look at the substitutions in the first game. I mean, Fernandes, in my opinion, should have stayed on. I think people have talked about he might have got sent off. But I think you have to then pull him aside and remind him that he's got an armband in his arm and lead by example. Um, the fact of he's going to miss the next game. I remember a player many moons ago who was going to miss out playing in the final, but he showed inc incredible courage and, his, and he, he improved his game. And that was Paul Gascoigne in the semi-final of a World Cup. Um, and if that's what... Um, that's what the manager's saying. He brought him off for discipline reasons. He was, he was losing it. Well, that's wrong. That is totally wrong. Um, it, they just lost their way. I don't... I mean, you look at the midfield, got run over. They dropped far too deep. They allowed a side that was having, having a poor domestic league... Domestic... Um, domestic league... In, sorry. A domestic, in their domestic league, Campaign, having a yeah. poor time. Um, and they let them get overrun. And they, gave, they allowed them confidence to get passes together in front of a back four that suddenly dropped almost to the edge of their own box. And if you allow average teams to have a lot of the ball, they're going to make something happen, good, bad or indifferent. And when you look at the second goal they scored at Old Trafford, that tells you if you just allow teams to put balls in the box, anything can happen and they get an incredible deflection and they end up going away with a two, you know, getting two goals back. And, and then you move on to the next game, you're expecting that, still expecting good things to them to be everything right but I still think they were caught up they were still caught up a little bit they wasn't right against Nottingham Forest which you know even then they weren't right Forest were poor but they just went they were wrong they were defensively is wrong I would have gone with a but I would have played Luke Shaw as a left sided centre half with Lindelof you would have got more from Lindelof because I think he's a really good centre half who has been tarnished in, in certain ways <clears throat> and maybe Dallow at left back or Malassia there, there were the changes, and you got a back four there would have been definitely more solid with an actual left footed centre half. Because taking the last 10 minutes of a first leg, it's like five mistakes, isn't it? Yeah. A catalogue of mistakes. It was, yeah, it was just ill discipline. Which they had, let's be fair, I know there was a change of personnel, Martinez being injured as a blow, Nova Rand's a blow. They had eradicated a lot of the mistakes, hadn't they, Manchester United? Mm, yeah. It, it was just. I don't know, we can talk about, look at everyone, we could be here for too long, but there are things that could have been done. Could you blame David Ahea? Yes, you, yeah, you have to blame him because he gave the, that first the one to Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire asked for the ball. He asked for it. He put his hand there and he said, I want it. So David Ahea gave it. Should, what David Ahea should have done was made his own decision and just gone long. And he should have let the ball run Harry Maguire then he would have broken down, broken down that play of trying to close him down. He would have broken it by letting it run. Decides to bring it back and then tries to go pass the ball through a player. Players are not ghosts. You can't go through them. So it was a poor decision by David Ahea. A poor decision and no awareness. His body shape was all wrong in Harry Maguire. And, that's, and that put them on their back foot. From then, they never recovered. So, will this have an effect on Sunday? Or is this now the perfect opportunity? One trough is gone. Don't go and mess up on Sunday. It's going to have an effect. It has to because they're, they're hearing about it. They're reading about what's happened. They mostly have to walk into that, you know, into that airport with all the airport staff still there after that as well. It's, it's in their heads. How do, they, how do they get it out of their heads? You're hoping they can have a good performance, but it's in their heads already that they're up against a seriously good side. If you're talking about football sides in the Premier League, you look at Manchester yeah. City and you look at Brighton. Brighton can beat anybody. They've shown their resilience. They've shown they've stepped forward from Potter in the manner they play now. They go 1-0 down at Stamford Bridge. Normally, they would have gone 1-0 down at a big club and just accepted it and everyone would have come away. But you're an half a good side, but unlucky if you could score goals. Now, they, they get back and they go and demand more. They produce more. And they, and they react a lot better now than what they did under Graham Potter. There's more fight in them. The manager's more aggressive in his manner. We've seen that with him on the touchline than Graham Potter. So, 
Brighton are, it's, it's, it's a game. So, if you're a Brighton player, are you delighted by that performance by Man United? Or are you thinking, oh, could we be getting a, I think, I a think, reaction? I think you're delighted because the reaction they would love to give Manchester United would be the reaction with their two, their two main centre-halves. And that would instil confidence right the way through the side. At this moment in time, are the are those a lot of those players, are they confident in, in maybe their back line at this moment in time? You can't be. No, but missing Martinez and Varane, it's yeah. so obvious, isn't it? And it was obvious as well, Mark, by the way, that David De Gea missed them. Um, I think Brighton have been phenomenal this season. Give us a prediction for 4.30 Sunday. Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to have to go with my heart and say that I'm going to have to say United to, to sneak it. To sneak it. I'm looking at something. It could be like 3-2. It's going to be goals. Are Man United going to keep a clean sheet? No. I'm looking at a lot of goals. 3-2 to Manchester United. And just a quick word on the FA Cup. You won it. We grew up. It was the big game. Not just because, you know, uh, Manchester United, Man City are there or whatever. I think it's two really good semi-finals. And I think the FA Cup's got a bit of its gloss back this year, hasn't it? I think it has. A lot more people are talking about it. Is it because it's two Manchester sides there? Maybe. But I think people are talking about it because they may be seeing the Brighton win it. They just might see that. I think that's keeping it in people's minds as well. They're kind of going, really? And now... And people, they did it in 83. Yeah, and they're kind of... It's like, you know, it's, it's lighting up now for Brighton. It's a massive game for their supporters. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's great for them. And they are thinking of 83. Without a shadow of a doubt, they're thinking... They're looking to get something back at Wembley where, where, they, got, where they got a little bit caught out by one of their players, one of their great players, <laughs> decided, decided that, he, you know, he just, he'll give United another game. Um, right, let's talk the uh, the Premier League. Friday night, Arsenal versus Southampton. Fascinating game, this. Obviously, people think Arsenal have blown it. But if they beat Southampton at home tonight, they are seven points clear of Man City. Of course, Man City will have two games in hand, and it's Man City versus Arsenal on Wednesday night. How do you see the home tie, first of all, tonight, Arsenal-Southampton? I think you have to now believe that Arsenal are, are going to actually go out and win this game after the after the four points that they've given away, to be perfectly honest, you, you've got to believe that they're going to go and beat Southampton at home. You have to believe as well that Southampton are going to give everything. They're going to be ugly in the way they go about the game. They're, going to be, they're not going to really care about playing great football. They're going to want to win, knowing that if they get beat, that's virtually 1-0 already there for them. They're not, going to come, they're not going to get out of it. So I expect Arsenal to have a battle and, and deal with it. Because they've had, you know, two performances. Liverpool, very good first 45 minutes, dead. Second against West Ham, good start again. Dominated the first half, could have had more. <clears throat> but they allow, they allow themselves to, you know, West Ham get a goal back. And then West Ham took over a little bit. But Arsenal throwing everything at the end. So they're going to they're have to be better. So I think Arsenal are going to win this one. Prediction? 2-0. And then Wednesday night is massive, isn't it? Man City Arsenal. Yeah, it is a yeah, it's a proper game. It's a really, really big game for City, but they've done it too many times, City. They've been in this predicament so many times. Even that point of after <coughs> after excuse me, after the World Cup, there was in there were chasing games where when their performances weren't good, they were struggling to get that continuity back in again to their game as a team. But I think they're just Arsenal are going to be the ones who are massively on edge. City win this, win that game. I think, yeah, they they get they virtually turn around and turn it around and say they're going to win the league by the time Arsenal after Arsenal play Southampton. Right, let's turn our attention to Saturday, twelve thirty, Fulham versus Leeds. Your old club, Fulham, obviously slipped since Mitrovic has been suspended, and Leeds are desperate for the points. Yes, they are, and after Leeds being beaten twice at home by those score lines, it's it's not a good place at the moment to be in as as a player. A triple next game away is an added bonus for them, but Fulham have found you know they've they've been having a torrid time of late. Their last half a dozen games have been poor performances and results. But um, I would have to say going to Everton and get I never thought they was going to get anything at Everton because I thought Goodison Park would have been Everton's saving grace this season. They can intimidate people, their fans, everything, make it nasty. But maybe because it was Fulham, they didn't really go at it as what they normally do if it was a bigger side. So I've, I've got a feeling Fulham are going to 
put Everton under serious pressure, I think Fulham will win. I Fulham remember. to beat Leeds yeah. at 12.30 on Saturday lunchtime. And then uh, Brentford, Aston Villa. What a job Unit Emery has done. <coughs> they were 16th when he took over. They are now 6th, Aston Villa. Mm. When you look at decisions to let managers go, Villa done a great job. Done a really good job in what they done. Their football was poor prior to that. They, there was like I think in-house fighting going on. You know, players weren't happy with situations. Now we look at it now. McGinn now has suddenly stepped back to where he was when there was talk of him Manchester United wanting him. He's found his form again. He seems like he's happy. Everything seems bright in the football they're playing. But where I've seen them, I was watching them play, and they were so negative. You know, Emery's gone now. He's suddenly getting everything that he deserves because he wasn't given the respect when he got the Arsenal job. But he's going to Brentford. Brentford need to flick on a little bit. They went on a great unbeaten run, and that's gone. And it's been it's gone emphatically, hasn't it? They've been beaten quite a few times. They've lost that zest. They're at home again. I'm going to go a little out. I don't know. I think Brentford to get something from this game. I think Brentford are going to. What's gone? I'm going to go Brentford to win 2-1. Right, let's quickly whip through the other three cock games. Crystal Palace, Everton. Obviously, Everton just above a drop zone on goal difference. Looks like Palace have done enough to stay up. Normally, when Palace are guaranteed to stay up, they, under Roy before, they used to stop, get to the points barrier yeah, and stop. But I think what now... Under him? Yeah, I yeah. think now they're, they're a little bit better than that. He's got more better players now. Eze has found a bit of form and Roy's playing him regularly as well. For me, the, my favourite player at Palace is Elise, Elise, wonderful footballer. He's added a bit of flair, but still that dogginess at the back where they don't give a lot away. Palace to win. Palace to win. I'm going to go, the safe bet is, I'm going to go 2-0. Uh, Leicester Wolves. Leicester must win a game soon. They've got too many good players. But you, can have, you can have loads of good players, but if you haven't got a heart, then that's a problem. And I think Leicester have got a few of them who are not willing to chip in. But I think they must find something this game. You know, it's a bit of a Midlandish derby. I just think Leicester to win this 1-2-1. One, one. Uh, Liverpool Forest. Forest not one in ten now. The problem that Forest have got, their home form was what was keeping them in check. And the unbeaten, they was unbeaten for four games up until the weekend at home. They've lost that edge at home now. They've brought their away form home. Their away form... Is the worst I've, you know, the worst away side I've seen in the Premier League. Um, they're going to get beat. I'm going to. All of a sudden, now everything's great at Liverpool. They might even give them the league title the way they're talking about them. Um, four nil, four nil to Liverpool. Then we move to uh, Sunday. Bournemouth, West Ham. Uh, Bournemouth, fourteenth now. West Ham, fifteenth. Bournemouth, thirty-three <coughs> points. I saw. I was at Tottenham, Bournemouth last weekend, and Bournemouth were excellent. Yes, Spurs had their patches, but they're virtually all counter-attacks or Bournemouth trying to overplay too much, trying too hard, but they've got a really good couple of young players in Rothwell and Ryan Christie, two wonderful footballers. And I just think they've got, they've got something about them, an edge, and they're playing for their lives, those players. They all want to be in the Premier League. Gary O'Neill has surprised a lot of people. Everyone was expecting to go straight away. West Ham... They're just going to dig in. If they score first, they will sit deep and t try and take the pressure. I've, I've got to go for Bournemouth from what I saw last week. Normally, they've got good results, and the next game, they've let it all go. I think now, they're on an edge now where they think to themselves, we can push a little bit more to make things look even better concrete by getting more points on the ball. Bournemouth to win 2-0. And finally, Newcastle fourth on 56 points versus Tottenham fifth on 53 points. Well... Tottenham are so flat, so negative. Um, they, they can't keep the ball. Defensively, they're poor. Really, really poor. Um, in what they try to do, playing this free at the back, they can't do it. They just haven't got the personnel to do it, but they keep persisting in it. Um, the fans are disillusioned. It's not a happy place at the moment, on and off the pitch. Definitely off the pitch with the fans. Newcastle, after what happened to them last weekend, where they got totally outplayed, but they're at home. 2-0 to Newcastle. And finally, who's going to win the FA Cup? Got to go with form at this moment in time. I don't think the form's going to... Got to go with Manchester City. 
And the uh, final question. Oh no, don't don't ask me that question. No, no. If oh. Manchester United finished in the top four yeah. and win the Carabao Cup, you'd have taken that at the start of the season. Oh, you? everyone would have done. Yeah, everyone would have taken top four. Don't you know the cup? For me, at the moment, where it's looking, the League Cup is a cherry on the top. If they were to get Champions League football. Right, you've heard it. He's predicting Man City to win the FA Cup. I was about to say, send the letters to him. Send a tweet to him, Man United fans. <laughs> He's predicting Man City. Let's be honest, they're playing very, very well. Thanks for watching. And if you're having a bet this weekend, please uh, keep it fun and gamble responsibly.